Today's conversation mind map is titled, Your Burning Desires Are Pathways to Fulfillment. So desire and fulfillment are one, or as we say, to desire a state is to have it. And one of the greatest joys in life is to fulfill our desires in imagination, from which they are realized as life experiences. Now, unnecessarily burning in the flames of resistance when it comes to desire is caused by holding on to past beliefs not true which are looking to be released. More specifically, a lot of times when it comes to desires is the belief of separation between desire and fulfillment. So beliefs of separation are automatically being released. And suffering is experienced in stewing in the burn of the release of them, rather than resting satisfied in the fulfillment of the desire in imagination. So that's the key. I'll repeat it again. Suffering in this context is a result of stewing in the burn of the release, rather than resting satisfied in the fulfillment of the desire in imagination. Resting satisfied in the fulfillment of the desire in imagination allows everything to happen automatically as it releases controlling beliefs of soul doership, allowing the unseen to do everything. To one who really acknowledges this, beyond conjecture, suffering ceases. You, as in your true essence, are already fulfilled. As in your essence of being is fulfillment. And imagination is where we go to confirm the fulfillment which desire inspires. And through imagination, we experience it as outer experiences of life. The outer experiences happen automatically by law. The unseen power does everything. This is distinct from chasing desires or trying to make or force your desires into existence. What we're discussing here is unconditionally accepting their existence in imagination, which from this premise they are experienced in physical existence automatically by law. So now today we're discussing instantly releasing resistance. It's possible, as all things are possible, and this is especially true because resistance is not our natural way of being. Thus, all we're doing here is returning to our natural way of being, and by this I mean spiritual perfection expressed through the body in perfect harmony. Resistance throughout the ages was actually a result of not allowing ourselves to be how we truly desire to be. Thus, unconditional acceptance of desires as fulfilled is not only the end of resistance, it is also the acceptance of living and experiencing life the way you truly desire to live. And we can do this through keeping the following two points into consideration. Firstly, by going to the end and remaining in the feeling of already being ideal now in every way, acknowledging beyond interpretation of appearances that you already have everything you desire, you are complete and need nothing from this world of appearances. Daily acknowledgement of this truth dissipates the illusion of separation between desire and fulfillment emotionalized as suffering. Number two, if any desire shows up unflinchingly and unhesitatingly fulfill it in imagination, experience the fulfillment of the desire as confirmation of you already being ideal now, like that's the way it is, and go on with your life, proving to yourself that you exist beyond the need of stewing in the flames of resistance. Remember the title here, Burning Desires Are Pathways to Fulfillment. Not implying that burning desires equal suffering, rather that burning desires equal fulfillment. Suffering results in stewing in the flames of resistance, and fulfillment results in accepting the desire as fact in imagination, like that's the way it is, and remaining in that state beyond inharmonious interpretation from the past in relation to appearances on the bridge of incidents to realizing the vision. Again, the law, we fulfill the desire in imagination by accepting that we are already that which we desire, and it happens. From my experience, all burning desires happened in experience through acceptance first in imagination, and they continue to happen, 
From building three successful businesses to ideal relationships, ideal lifestyle, whatever. It never needs to end. Desire shows up, fulfill it in imagination, and you go on to higher degrees of realizing your desires. As Neville Goddard once said, the spiritual self speaks to the natural self through the language of desire. The key to progress in life and to fulfillment of dreams lies in ready obedience to its voice. Unhesitating obedience to its voice is an immediate assumption of the wish fulfilled. See how it says, unhesitating obedience to its voice is an immediate assumption of the wish fulfilled? It doesn't say anything about stewing in the burn of resistance. It's not a natural thing to do to sit there and suffer unnecessarily. Suffering in this regard is the result of not accepting desires as already fulfilled. Instead, perhaps denying them, which could be suppressing or repressing desires, and I do not encourage that. I encourage fulfilling them in imagination and experiencing the desires of your heart, as Steve Jobs said in his commencement speech. Follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. So rekindle yourself with these two habits, which bring us back to our natural way of being. Again, acknowledge that desire means already having. As a result, you observe and enjoy experiencing all that show up in relation to this way of being, which then further encourages this way of being. And remain true to this during your business or personal life initiatives, eliminating the unnecessary resistance and suffering which happens when a person does not allow themselves to be how they truly desire to be. Going against their natural way of being, rather forcing themselves to conform to untrue beliefs. Forget it and be how you truly desire to be, without looking for proof, approval, validation, or confirmation to the world of appearances, which could result in suffering through seeking for these. Seek within and find it within. Your true self is unconditionally accepting of desires in imagination. Thus, the only true proof, approval, validation, or confirmation is imagination, as imagination is the true reality from which the outer world of appearances is a made-up reflection of. And speaking of beliefs of resistance, worth letting burn on the side as you rest in fulfillment, is the one of having to figure out how to create. You see, creation is already complete. Thus, there's nothing to actually create, only reveal through imagination. God created it all, and humanity is here to experience creation guided by desire through imagination. This brings us peace of mind, knowing that it can only appear that way, and by that I mean the physical actions of creating, where the person appears as the sole doer, yet this is not the true cause. Rather, imagination is being projected into form, which includes the appearances of the physical self that moves automatically by law to perform whatever the creative expression may be. This is theater of the mind consciously selected from the source of it all, that already exists in imagination. So by accepting that creation is already complete and that humanity only appears to be revealing what has already been created since the beginning of time, which is actually the eternal moment now, the belief of having to figure things out as far as the personal self is involved is surrendered to the fact it has already been figured out. We simply allow it to happen by remaining in the flow from our vision without trying to control or manipulate the process. Controlling or manipulating beliefs that result in emotional resistance are allowed to, we could say, burn aside while you remain unaffected in fulfillment on the way to realizing your vision. This is key. You don't need to burn or suffer during the process. That's only a belief. You do realize that your true nature, your awareness of being is beyond suffering, this was the teachings from the Rishis who wrote the Vedas. Beyond the body, thoughts, and emotions is your awareness of being that remains unconditional and unmoved by these. And it is accessed now through simple acknowledgement. I am that who is aware of, and as I exist beyond what I am aware of, I can thus choose not to identify with resistance. You disentangle the mind from these attachments 
and remain in the divine center, as James Allen once articulated. The secret of life, of abundant life, with its strength, its felicity, and its unbroken peace, is to find the divine center within oneself, and to live in and from that, instead of in that outer circumference of disturbances. So in practice, in the moment if resistance is experienced, there's no need to stew in it. Don't burn yourself for no reason. Allow the promise revealed by desire to burn the false beliefs aside by mentally releasing into imagining what implies your desire is fulfilled and remain in that feeling of fulfillment from which you operate ideally and automatically from without resistance. Speaking of which, I was asked a question the other day, how long does it take? I said instantly. Change happens in an instant because you are the unconditional, beyond belief, unbiased, unaffected observer of it all. It is only attachment to corresponding beliefs that perpetuate the burn of resistance and the illusions of time in the form of the stewing. There's only one moment, now. Delays and lengths of time are construct of mind, and those beliefs are released by acknowledging your divine center, your awareness of being. I also did two detailed videos on this recently. I'll link in the description to them. So again, by remaining in the feeling of you already being all that you desire to be now in imagination, everything happens automatically and ideally from this premise. The belief of having to do this or that to create is released and you operate automatically from this flow in an ideal way. I like how Neville Goddard once said it. He said, We claim that the world was a manifestation of consciousness, that the individual's environment, circumstances, and conditions of life were the outpicturing of the particular state of consciousness in which the individual abides. Therefore, the individual sees whatever they are by virtue of the state of consciousness from which they view the world. Any attempt to change the outer world before they change the inner structure of their mind is to labor in vain. Everything happens by order. So then what generates unnecessary complexity and confusion in relation to this? Well, it's beliefs that add resistance to the truth of to desire a state is to already have it. I like how James Allen also said it in As a Man Thinketh. To desire is to obtain. So thus to desire is to already have, as there's no real separation or gap in consciousness. Any beliefs that unnecessarily separate the two result in suffering. To desire is to obtain. That is full acceptance of self. One single thought clears up all the resistance, as this is the truth. You already have everything. Anytime a desire shows up, acknowledge you already have it. Beyond suffering or resistance, you already have it. This is because your awareness of being already has everything, needs nothing, and life appears as a journey of acknowledging this completion regardless of untrue interpretations of appearances. And this is the great law. It is what you are aware of being now in imagination. Beyond untrue interpretations of appearances or seemingly secondary causes made up by humans which add unnecessary complexity and suffering result in stewing and resistance rather than resting satisfied through the simplicity of the great law. You see, you can imagine anything. You can, within your mind's eye, see the contents of eternity in imagination. All things already exist in imagination. So out of the infinite possibilities that already exist in imagination, we choose what we desire and accept it as true and it is done for us. Or we could say, it was already done for us and it only appears as being done for us because Nothing is to be created. Creation is complete. So more accurately put, we are the ones who reveal what already exists through acceptance and imagination, that we already have what we desire, as to desire is to obtain, as James Allen stated. Now, as mentioned earlier, the Vedas taught the simplest path to release all identification in the moment is by returning to the position of unconditional self, awareness of being. By acknowledging that you transcend thoughts, emotions, mind, and body, you are instantly free to recall the feeling of already being ideal now, which is your natural way of being. Then you're free to observe and enjoy experiencing all that shows up in relation to this way of being, which further encourages this way of being. 
So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I accept in imagination that I am all that I desire to be now. All that I desire is instantly accepted as fulfilled in imagination, from which this world appears automatically as a manifestation of. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.